All right, sounds good. Once again, uh, thanks everybody um, for joining in and tuning into JDocon 2022. And uh, this today's session, uh, the server to cloud migration uh, pick Tunnel Brain. Um, we'll just get started with introductions. Uh, this is Manohar Goli, and I'm CTO and co founder of Tunnel. And I have with me two of my colleagues who are spearheading uh, our migration. Uh, go ahead, Nitish. Hi, all. Uh, I'm Nitish Kamal. I'm the director of managed services at Trundle. I manage um, the migration services and the Latin migration services division at Trundle. I'm also one of the co founders. Thank you. There we are. Hello, everyone. This is Divya Ranganathan. I am an Atlassian lead engineer at Trundle, managing uh, migration services. Awesome. All right. So we'll just get straight into the agenda and then we'll just dig deep into the, the topics. So we'll just kind of uh, keep it simple here uh, as far as the, the introductions are concerned. Uh, for the agenda, uh, I know that a lot of people are still in love with the, the servers and, you know, they were just not yet look past the server instances because you know they've been using it for so long so we, we thought just giving a quick Atlassian cloud overview might help you know folks who are just trying to kind of you know look past where they are and just start looking towards the cloud and then we'll also try to cover uh, you know if it's a cloud the right platform for you because there are numerous reasons you know for certain teams it may not be and what if you know the cloud is not really the platform the server is not the end of the world probably you should have another alternative so we'll also try to cover some of those options and then we'll just go straight into what if you know the cloud is right and then the time is right for you to move forward so um you know we'll just see how the timelines are stacked up and you know how you can plan things and then obviously then we'll just uh, diverge into some of the the learnings that trundle has been kind of you know getting over the period of time because we've been doing numerous uh server to cloud and cloud to cloud mergers you know numerous other platforms to cloud migrations and also divya and uh, nitish will also Go into more specifics on uh, what are different approaches, methods, and what are the limitations around you know these um, uh, methods you know that we are just trying to do, and so that it's very important that we all should know about it. So as far as the cloud overview is concerned, I, I mean, uh, since uh, close to kind of you know more than a decade now, Atlassian started investing heavily into their cloud-first approach. You know, they started putting that messaging loud and clear that you know the future is cloud, and they started investing a lot of their time and money and the resources in building, you know, and maturing these cloud applications. It started out with, uh, you know, Jira and Confluence, and now, you know, majority of their apps are readily available on the cloud. So some of those, you know, top features, right, you know, particularly just to pick out the security, the built-in security, privacy, and compliance and reliability aspects of it. And uh, people who've been using server and on-prem uh, versions know, you know, what it takes to kind of continuously keep up with, uh, the version upgrades, maintaining the hardware, making sure that it's up and running all the time. And also, you know, the upgrades, it's very painful, you know, how it is. And without upgrades, there are no new features being, you know, introduced to the end users. So that means, you know, they have, that definitely hampers the overall collaboration and the innovative pace at which the team works. And also, you know, uh, the, the pricing, you know, the flexible pricing, because, you know, uh, as and when you use it, on-demand pricing, you know, a lot of, uh, different teams sizes you know matters you know people with uh, large teams would love to kind of you know have more instances under same single single billing so Atlassian started introducing all of those things and apart from that a huge huge invested uh, you know uh, research and development investments going into uh, these things that means Atlassian is making it loud and clear it's it's going to invest continue to invest in cloud and that's going to be the primary product and the driver for the, the for the future Okay, so now that said, you know, there are a lot of good things um, on, on um, this is a cloud platform, right, for you, right? So uh, we, we picked, you know, these four uh, primary aspects on why, you know, we also think that the cloud is also a right platform for you guys. You know, to start off with, you got to probably uh, start thinking about what it is taking for our IT and, you know, ops team to kind of continue to maintain and upgrade, uh, you know, the software, you know, uh, versions, uh, and also kind of, you know, making sure that the IT is not burdened with, you know, to keep up with this particular tool, because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the teams need to do what they need to do and not just continuously chase these upgrades and maintaining this software that in turn should be helping them to kind of, you know, uh, move at a faster pace, right? And also, you know, more and more uh, as, as we kind of, you know, continue to uh, go into more and more digital world, people kind of just start getting that uh, risk of, you know, 
having those vulnerabilities, you know, having those holes in these uh, self-maintained uh, installations, you know, Atlassian uh, will take that off of your plate completely because there is a dedicated team of engineers who are continuously working and make sure that, you know, these SaaS products are, you know, um, as, as much as uh, foolproof, you know, uh, as it can get, right? And then also kind of, you know, as and as when the teams are just getting more and more, uh, you know, distributed and there is there is large uh, reason for them to not have additional, uh, you know, uh, more, you know, more and more, you know, additional applications to kind of be on their systems or, you know, they, they should have more flexibility kind of to be able to access these collaboration tools. Unless, you know, you give that flexibility, you know, it's very hard for the teams to kind of work uh, together in this distributed environment. You know, that means, you know, with the SaaS products, you know, that will kind of completely take take the equation out. You know, you don't need to have a VPN, you don't need to have an additional, uh, um, you know, uh, gateways to kind of get to these applications. You can just access it whenever, wherever you want on a web browser or on a mobile app. And then that allows you to kind of, you know, overall in combined, just make sure that, you know, your teams focus on what they need to do. And then you just continuously kind of keep working on what they need to do without worrying about any of the additional burdens that they, you know, need to worry about. All right. Again, you know, with all of that said, um, still there could be certain reasons, you know, that might be stopping you from, uh, you know, just going to the cloud. You know, two main reasons, right? Two main reasons, you know, especially for the for the companies and the teams that are, you know, very tightly uh, put under watch by, um, you know, regulators, like particularly the financial companies. You know, the the teams that are supporting the healthcare, where you know they kind of transact a lot of PII, PHI data, right? You know, they are. Uh, constantly put under uh, these compliances, particularly, and still Atlassian is trying to kind of work uh, the way around to make sure that you know they give um, you know all these compliance related um, in built into these applications. But it's it's a it's a still a uh, is, is a long way to go for all of these products to come under those things. And uh, you know another reason is you know for certain companies putting their data in whatever capacity in um, a non uh, their own environments is a big no, no, no. You know, that's that means, you know, they have to kind of keep the data within their own um, setup. You know, they should have a full control of it and, you know, they should have a very tight leash on, uh, you know, who is getting access to it. You know, if that said, if you cannot go to a cloud, again, that's not the end of the world. You know, Atlassian is continuing to kind of, you know, give their data center offerings to these kind of customers who want to kind of continue to keep the data behind the firewall and within their RAM. So the DC is there. So just, you know, make sure that you guys evaluate, um, you know, the, the, all the DC options and, you know, whatnot, uh, which has its own share of, uh, um, you know, overhead and the challenges uh, as, as much as the server has, but, you know, you at least have an option to kind of, you know, have a fallback on. Right, Nidish next. Thank you, Manohar, for the wonderful overview. Um, so emphasizing on what Manohar had mentioned in terms of Alassin's plan to move forward uh, with the cloud um, applications, you know, the major decision was taken um, last year to sunset uh, Jira server, Confluence server, and all the other Alassin server products. So as part of this decision, in the beginning of this year, in February 2nd, 2021, they ended selling new license server licenses and also stopped, um, you know, making feature developments on any server product. And by the beginning of next year, to be precise, on February 15th, they are going to get rid of uh, cloud support, I'm sorry, uh, server support and um, also uh, new app sales will not be possible after that date. So does that mean you can't use um, Atlassian server products? No. Atlassian server products are perpetual uh, licenses and um, you can always use it till the time you like, but you will lose out on a lot of major uh, feature upgrades, version upgrades, and also, you know, bug fixes because uh, after, you know, February um, 15, 2024, Atlassian will not support your instance. So that's a major change. So that doesn't mean that uh, you can't use a product, but it's not the end, uh, you know, but as a partner, we know the amount of uh, 
investment that is being made on the cloud platform and the data center platform. So it is highly recommended for you to migrate over to cloud. So having said that, you know, we are uh, part of an elite, uh, elite group of, uh, you know, organizations where, you know, hundreds of migrations are conducted. We always have, uh, you know, a lot of migrations on our paper. We basically, uh, you know, perform migrations, uh, you know, uh, in terms of size, there are enterprise migrations uh, with thousands of users. And we have also performed migrations with, you know, just 10 to 20 users. Every migration is different. And a lot of times, uh, you know, there are questions about, we tried doing the migration, but we failed. So what is the secret ingredient behind a successful migration? So any clues? No, there is no secret ingredient. You need to kind of uh, follow the tested approach, which is, I mean, at Trundle, we divide any cloud migration into three major phases. One is uh, the discovery phase, uh, where you start with racing a move ticket with Atlassian. So just to ensure that, you know, Atlassian will be there to migrate you to cloud. In fact, they are more keen to see more cloud customers. And there is a dedicated team of engineers and managers who just handle cloud migrations. So as soon as you plan, um, on getting your server products migrated to uh, cloud, raise a move ticket with Atlassian support. You will be uh, having a dedicated migration support manager and a set of engineers who will be working with you to ensure that the migration is happening seamlessly. You can always you know, rely on uh, partners like us in getting migration done because we do it on a regular basis and we know the pros and cons of performing uh, um, a migration and what are the things that you can benefit uh, if we kind of follow the you know tested approach. So every customer has their own needs uh, based on the size and the complexity of every Atlas in server instance. We uh, decide whether we can just do a lift and shift uh, migration or a phased approach where. Uh, you know, there would be multiple levels of migration that happens. Right now, we are working on merging close to 50 uh, instances into a single instance, and you can't do it uh, in a single session or uh, uh, a couple of days. You need to have uh, more phased migration uh, to ensure these kind of complicated migrations. Again, <clears throat> there are various customers who work 24-7, 365 days, and they prefer not to have downtime. So there is a different approach to deal with these migration. And uh, on Atlassian Cloud, uh, there are various platforms like standard, premium, and enterprise. And the user tiers are very different from what you have in uh, server and data center. So based on that, um, you know there is a huge impact of cost licensing and your budgeting. Uh, this is also something that you need to kind of plan before your migration and we add it as part of our discovery. And um, above all these things, you need to document all the risk and the features that may be different on cloud that you have not experienced so that you know what you're going to get after you migrate over to cloud. The second phase is basically the testing phase. Um, based on your uh, discovery um, plan and documentation, you can perform cloud migration trials. Atlassian will give you free cloud instances to perform um, your test migration. You need to just reach out to Atlassian or a partner like us to you know, get your free Atlassian cloud uh, trial enabled. Second um, major uh, you know, part of testing is Atlassian access indication. Unlike your server products, you can't integrate um, with um, your AD, LDAP, or any other uh, IDP directly uh, using a Atlassian Cloud product. You need to rely on a license subscription for Atlassian access to perform an integration between your IDP and uh, do other things like SSO, multi-factor authentication and um, uh, you know security um, in terms of your password strength, all those things are controlled by last and access. Um, then every migration is 
going to be successful if you kind of focus on getting rid of unwanted data from your current uh, server instance. This includes data related to unwanted workflows, spaces, uh, repositories, um, and also the most important thing, the user data. You don't want to migrate over to cloud if you have, you know, 30 percentage of your users who have not logged on to a cloud instance, uh, sorry, server instance at all. The, you know, the next option is add-on compatibility and testing. So in terms of add-ons, um, Atlas and Marketplace has a wide range of add-ons and some of these add-ons are not yet available on cloud if you're comparing uh, you know, at last in marketplace with uh, cloud, cloud, cloud compatibility, things have changed a lot. You have almost all the major, um, you know, marketplace um, apps available on cloud, but some of the features are very different. Uh, for instance, there are products like um, Adaptive Script Runner, uh, which is a very popular add-on, and um, they have a different architecture on server and data center where you tend to um, get additional features like um, behaviors which is not available on a cloud instance. So you need to plan uh, uh, on replacing these functionalities with different add-ons and um, then document it, test it, and uh, you know, go ahead with the production migration. So the most important part of um, your testing is perform all the testing, you know, create a wonderful run book with detailed steps and the exact time required to perform each operation because this is going to be your source of truth on the big production day. If you do uh, spend a lot of uh, time on testing and create a, a run book, you can always do a successful production migration because if you finish your discovery and um, uh, you know testing uh, phase in a dedicated manner, 80% of your work is done. All you have to do is rely on the run book, perform the migration, and after the migration, sometimes you tend to lose uh, functionalities like, uh, you know, some custom fields uh, value not being added to a issue, uh, some advanced workflow settings like um, conditions, post functions, and validators not being migrated over. So you need to identify these things, rebuild it, and then after every production migration activity is done, validate and test everything. Uh, we highly recommend performing migrations over a weekend. If possible, start on a Friday evening and then finish everything by Sunday morning and hand over the instance uh, to your core users so that they test it out and then, you know, go live on a Monday morning. So that is the best approach. I will let uh, Divya talk about the different approaches of migration and how we can kind of attain a successful migration. Thank you, Nitish. So guys, like we will be discussing more details about the cloud migration approaches and methods. Uh, currently in, in uh, use, there are three types of uh, uh, tools that are available in uh, all the Atlassian products. Uh, those are the cloud migration assistance, cloud site import, and CSV import. Uh, when talking about CSV import, CSV import is not recommended for use since it consumes a lot of time and a lot of manual efforts. So it will also cause uh, a lot of errors. Uh, so we'll just use CSV import for doing the data patching after we migrate data of uh, using cloud migration assistant or cloud site import. The second method is using cloud site import method. Uh, cloud site import method was previously used for all type of migration, but currently Atlassian has deprecated this process. And then uh, it is now currently being only used by uh, sites that are having users more than thousand. So, uh, the only current method that is being suggested by Atlassian is to use the migration assistance. The migration assistance will be helpful in migrating your data from uh, server to cloud or DC to cloud and to migrate your data from a cloud to another cloud instance. When talking about these migration assistance, there are like different types of uh, migration assistance that are available based on the uh, respective Atlassian tools. So when you take G, uh, G, uh, JCMA, it is Jira Cloud Migration Assistant. Uh, this, uh, all these assistants will come in, uh, uh, we can uh, migrate data 
through all these assistance uh, uh, in four uh, in three different phases the first phase we will classify it as the uh, app migration the second phase is the user migration and the third phase is the project or uh, space data migration so the first phase uh, talking about the first phase of app migration these migration assistance uh, will provide a, 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 a different set of features that are helpful for us to uh, compare the uh, apps between server and cloud instances um, it will uh, it will help us to analyze whether those apps are present on the cloud instances if the apps are present on the cloud instances whether there is an automated path or if the apps are not present on the cloud instance uh, then we will have to uh, reduce the add-on on the server and go for other alternatives on the cloud instance so um, all these analysis can also be done on uh, jcma and coming to user migration always we suggest to perform uh, user migration before we migrate data so all these assistance will also provide us a, a view of uh, what your instance uh, users and groups looks like whether you have any invalid user email id whether you have any duplicate email ids all those uh, uh, analysis can be done using these migration assistance so uh, based on these assistance you can uh, proceed further uh, with your project and data migration uh, when, when speaking about project data and attachment, it will allow you to migrate all your project data, uh, including your uh, dashboards, filters, all boards, everything to your uh, cloud instances. So there is another variation of this uh, JCMA. It is the cloud to cloud migration that will be available on all your uh, cloud platforms. So when, uh, as we spoke about all the migration tools and how we need to uh, migrate to the cloud instance, we should also be aware of the limitations that are uh, possibly there in the uh, migration so uh, some of the limitations we have listed out here and we will go through uh, a, a each and every point in detail the, so, so first point is that uh, user accounts without an email id cannot be migrated to the cloud instance because in server if you see the unique identifier is the username but in the cloud instance the uh, unique identifier is email id so without an email id uh, you cannot migrate any user account from server to cloud so that is why here jcma will be helping you in uh, finding the, if there are any valid user account so based upon that analysis you can fix it and then migrate it to the cloud instance the next one is the difference in marketplace add-ons so if you see uh, there are api differences between uh, server and cloud instances so there are uh, and uh, several marketplace add-ons uh, will have some certain set of features in your server uh, instance and they don't have those set of features in your cloud instance this is because of the api difference and uh, these marketplace vendors, I know they are uh, like trying hard to um, migrate features to server and cloud. So we, we will have to analyze those uh, differences in our UAT phase itself and then uh, try to migrate it uh, without any data loss. So then the next limitation that it will be migrating uh, uh, Jira filters and dashboards. The, uh, the reason for highlighting it as a limitation is because these features doesn't come as uh, bundled with the JCMA. Um, uh, so we will have to add a feature flag for Jira, uh, migrating Jira filters and dashboards. So uh, when you add those feature flags, it will ultimately end, end up in error. So before uh, doing a JCMA, you will have to uh, clean up your uh, uh, Jira filters and dashboards. The next point is a uh, difference in Atlassian server and uh, cloud user management. This is because in server, uh, you, you are just handling with two groups, Jira administrators and Jira system administrators. But whereas in cloud, you have different other groups like site admins, trusted users, product access, etc. So when you're migrating it to cloud, it is better to analyze all these features in, uh, in, uh, in the UAT phase itself and then go with the production migration. The next feature is that you are trying to migrate Confluence spaces and Bitbucket projects and repositories. Uh, so while that time, if there are any, if there is any error that occurs in your plan, 
uh, you will not be able to find the error logs in JCMA and in, uh, in CCMA and DCMA. But whereas in uh, Jira, you will be able to find the error logs and, uh, and you can fix it by yourself. Uh, the last limitation would be uh, in your server instances, you would have enabled SSO for all your server products. But when it comes to the in, when it comes to the cloud products, you cannot enable uh, SSO without Atlassian access. So uh, access is like one cloud account for multiple uh, cloud sites. So uh, you should have a cloud sub uh, access subscription to enable SSO and continue with it. So yeah, guys, that is, that's all we have it for today. I hope uh, everybody were asking for us uh, ingredient, but we have given you a recipe. So yeah, let's uh, get into a, a question and answer session. And then uh, we'll be able to cover all your questions there. Thank you, Divya. So we are open to take questions. Uh, so Jennifer, if you have any questions, we can probably take those questions and then uh, you know move forward. Um, you know, if uh, you want to reach out to us, you know, individually after the session is done, please do visit the Trundle virtual booth and set up a one-on-one -on -one session with us. We have also shared our email IDs. Um, you are, uh, you know, welcome to send an email uh, if you have any additional questions. We have a question of the mail in the chat box. So they say, can you export a project from Jira server to Im and import it to Jira cloud? Will it export, import all project configuration like custom fields, permission schemes, screen schemes, etc.? Hey, Frederick. Um, so we can use uh, Jira Cloud Migration Assistant, uh, which was uh, explained earlier, to perform um, individual project migrations as well. You don't have to migrate the entire instance to cloud. If you decide to migrate only one project, that is doable. And, uh, you know, all the standard configurations like uh, uh, workflows, screens, custom fields, permission schemes, screen schemes, um, and similar um, uh, attributes will be migrated over successfully. Sometimes if you're using external add-ons um, to enhance your workflows, uh, you know, if the add-on doesn't have uh, cloud migration um, assistance or support, or they're not uh, signed up for this program, you might have to rebuild these features uh, manually or rely on a different add-on. But some of these, uh, popular add-ons like JMW have, you know, they have this feature. Um, so you can make use of that and you can always uh, perform an individual project migration to uh, cloud. Any other questions? Frederick, uh, if you have any follow-up um, questions on, uh, you know, you can always reach out to us. You can, we have a couple of more minutes, so you can type it or, you know, visit us and the Trundle virtual booth, we will be able to support you. Thank you, Frederick. So Nitish, uh, while you know the the rest of the participants uh, you know type in their questions, uh, you and Divya can share like you know any of those specific tricky situations that you know we have seen in the past uh, year year and a half as far as the server to cloud migrations are concerned. Well, um, you know since cloud is um, completely handled by Atlassian in terms of the backend, you know, including database, um, you know. Uh, the log files and other things. You need to collaborate with the last and ensure that uh, you know their uh, you know migration support team is available when you perform the um, cloud production migration to fix any of the cloud bugs. That's a very important aspect. Along with that, uh, if you are using uh, third-party add-ons like um, X-ray uh, or some other test tool where you know. A uh, lot of issues are created linked with uh, your Jira project. You need to also reach out to the vendor and ensure that they are going to provide support during the migration. 
Um, it's about communicating properly to the stakeholders to ensure that uh, no hurdles are there when you perform the migration and you always have people to provide you support just in case if uh, something goes wrong. Okay. And um, to give you a background about how we started migration, when we started migration, there was no cloud migration assistant and sometimes uh, you know, we had to deal with merging two different uh, cloud instances where uh, you know, we used to set up uh, server instances you know, migrate uh, cloud A data to server A, then also create uh, another server instance, uh, server B, uh, migrate content from cloud B to server B, then perform uh, server to server migration, merge everything into a single server, and then perform uh, site restoration on cloud. And I still remember having sleepless nights where we ended up uh, dealing with uh, bugs so Atlassian has come a long way. They have amazing tools to perform your uh, cloud migration. And um, you know, with time, even partners like us, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, in, got involved in making suggestions to Atlassian in terms of uh, the cloud migration tools. We were part of the early access program for these tools. We made suggestions. It was part of the feedback, and right now they are, uh, you know, having um, almost a near perfect, uh, you know, set of tools. In the future, I'm pretty sure they will continue to progress and uh, make your cloud migration, uh, you know, seamless and uh, you know even more uh, delightful. So that is uh, what we envision, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we can associate with you guys uh, to perform similar activities in the future. Correct, right, sounds good. Any other questions, Jennifer? Well, nothing yet. All right, sounds good. Yes, if you kind of, you know, come across any other questions related to the cloud migration, uh, we are happy to kind of answer it. Please uh, do book one on ones with anybody uh, from the virtual booth, uh, Tundra's virtual booth, or you could just email one of us. We're definitely going to do. Okay. So we have one question. We have a question. Yeah. What are what the major, major challenges yes. you face during migrations? Uh, there are a lot of challenges. Um, you know, sometimes we end up uh, dealing with uh, licensing related issues because some customers delay things uh, and end up in a situation where they don't uh, procure licenses on time and uh, force uh, or, you know, just go ahead and perform the migration. Sometimes they lose out on features. So these kind of challenges are something that we can um, eliminate if we are planning things in a better way and um, also collaborate with uh, you know, uh, Atlassian's procurement team or your partner procurement team um, because uh, cloud, um, you know, you can always um, finalize your products and get uh, quotes for what, um, you know, you are planning to migrate over to cloud, including your third-party add-ons. Um, and this will basically help you in uh, not um, ending up in a situation where you migrated over to cloud, but you don't have valid licenses. And, uh, you know, till um, I, I think we still have uh, loyalty discounts from Atlassian if you have valid uh, server licenses. Uh, so try to make use of these things. Uh, plan your licensing as well ahead of time, not just uh, your technical migration, because that's also a, um, a critical uh, part of this puzzle. And also, Nitish, uh, okay, there's another question. Do you have a dedicated team to perform migrations? Yes, um, there is a dedicated migration team at Trundle. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we are from that team. We uh, do migrations day in and day out, not just from um, Atlassian server or Atlassian products. We have migrated from different third-party tools like Asana, um, you know, ServiceNow, uh, Freshdesk, uh, you know, WorkZone, um, Wiki, uh, Google Wiki. So it's part of uh, our day-to-day -day activities and uh, we have experts in all these areas and uh, 
you know, it's a team uh, well equipped to handle any kind of migration. And also, Nitish, can you share uh, some of those, uh, you know, tips as far as the the current uh, offerings that Atlassian is giving or incentives, you know, might as well just call it as incentives Atlassian is giving for the server customers, you know, who are trying to move. Uh, largely because, you know, a lot of times the admins would try and cover all the technical aspects of the migration, but may not kind of consider the end user's perspective because moving from server to cloud means the new new UI, you know, it's it's slightly different than what the server UI might be, you know, how are, how are uh, uh, you know, the customers, uh, you know, coping up with this user level uh, changes and the adoption issues that might come up? Well, um, you know, this is something that can be dealt with, uh, you know, while performing uh, your test migration because you basically build a replica of your protection instance and uh, understand what are the things that you will get on cloud. And um, in terms of the benefits that Alas and give, uh, you know, I will start uh, with one benefit, uh, which is basically if you are a, you know, customer with more than 1000 users, you get a loyalty discount when you migrate over to cloud. Apart from that, um, you know, some of the add-ons that you have on your on server, like um, inside asset management, uh, Proforma, and um, similar add-ons are basically or advanced roadmap for Jira, which is portfolio. Um, so these products are bundled with various versions or uh, um, available platforms on um, Atlas and like uh, um, Jira service management, uh, premium and enterprise versions uh, have uh, an asset management functionality, which is inside along with, uh, you know, Jira work management has Proforma and uh, Jira software has advanced roadmaps. So you kind of save uh, on your overall budget when you kind of uh, pick the right platform um, and you know you don't have to worry about uh, procuring the add-on separately because you are getting the same benefits at a less lesser cost plus uh, additional features like uh, if you're a premium customer you are eligible to get priority support and um, you can make use of these uh, uh, additional uh, functionalities and have a, a you know better uh, administration experience on cloud. And I also believe, uh, you know, Atlassian do provide, uh, you know, free licenses, the cloud licenses, so that yes. the customers can try it out as long as they would want to. I mean, is there a timeline or is there a ceiling on how how long, you know, those uh, free trial versions are would be? Uh, with Trundle, if you, uh, you know, work with us, we can get you licenses uh, uh, for testing for up to like six months, three months to six months. That is something Perfect. which we can do. And um, uh, when you spoke about these instances, I also wanted to emphasize on factors like, uh, you know, sandbox instances being available on premium and enterprise versions uh, of, uh, you know, Atlas and Cloud uh, products. So these sandbox um, instances are free of cost. You don't even have to pay for the licenses. Um, the only thing that you need to do is you need to transfer your uh, production instance uh, data to these sandbox instances. Um, other than that, you can have you know a lot of these instances for testing so that you are not performing some critical activity that you are not 100% confident about on your production instance and perform this task on your uh, sandbox machines. Sounds good. There's one more question here. Uh, how do you manage business continuity during migration? Do users get impacted during the process? Uh, at Trundle, we uh, perform migrations in such a way that, uh, you know, we don't shut down your instance uh, while performing migration. The only impact that you will have is, you know, of course, we only perform migrations on weekends. The only impact that you have is, you know, you won't be able to add new content on your instance because we don't want to end up in a situation where uh, you know we perform the migration and some incremental database uh, added to the server. So we convert all the last and server instances into read-only mode. But a user can always view their issue, their project, their attachment, their comment. The only thing that they you know will lose during those uh, couple of days is basically the ability to add new comments, new tickets, new attachments. But whatever they are working on, they can always refer that. And uh, it's basically uh, no downtime uh, migration approach. 
That's good. That was the last question that we had. So, guys, uh, you know, Jira Con day one is almost done. We uh, have the closing session by Patrick. So, Please do attend that and JiraCon is not done. We have one more day. This is specific for the Asia Pacific uh, customers and users. So we have some exciting sessions that are uh, lined up. So the Jira guy, Rodney, is going to conduct a session on future of Alaskan administration. You also get to you know uh, participate in aligned business and software teams with JWM by Loretta. So these are all uh, amazing uh, sessions. Then uh, this is something that I attended uh, earlier today and it was very useful. At last in licenses, best practices plus discussion with Tandil by Jitesh Kamal. So you will get some uh, insider tips about how to kind of save a lot on your licensing. So please do attend the session. This is going to be really useful. You will not regret spending time on that because if you are planning to migrate over to cloud, this is a you know a must attend session. App development for Jira in Fosh 101 is going to be conducted by Sarika and uh, Ajay Manuel. You get to know about how you can uh, develop um, apps on cloud, and then then we have a session for tickets, services, and people. Mechanisms of Digital Transformation by Julia and Astrid. Um, so please do attend the sessions and I hope uh, JiraCon 22 was uh, much better than 21. We feel that uh, you know uh, this event is growing next year. It's going to be much more bigger. Um, and I would like to thank you all for uh, spending your time uh, to be with us and participate in these sessions. Do indulge in the fun activities. There are some good, uh, um, you know, gifts that you can get if you are participating in events and, uh, you know, uh, reach out to us uh, in the Trundle booth if you have any questions. There are also booths conducted by our partners. Um, so if you are keen about knowing some of the products that you are going to use in the future or you are testing out, do attend uh, or join those virtual booths and ask your questions. You can always set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussion with uh, the uh, respective host. And um, as uh, I mentioned, we have already shared our email IDs. Please send us an email if you are planning to perform a migration and we need to handle step. Uh, you will also get all these um, uh, materials that are recorded after the event um, is done so that you can always refer to it. So it is going to be available with your username and password. So don't uh, you know, unbookmark your handle JiraCon, uh, you know, link, it is going to be useful. Thank you, Nitesh. Uh, thank you, Divya. And thank you, everybody, for joining today with us. And uh, we're hoping you continue to have a good time uh, here at JiraCon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.